What should I do with the many different currencies that you can use in punishing Grey Raven? Great question, random bystander who definitely asked that question. Let me tell you. So I've been spending a bunch of time going through all the different shops, game modes, getting community feedback, and reading up on wikis to look up what all of the different currencies in Punishing Grey Raven does. I've had enough of this confusion, it has been confusing for me for too long, and it's time that I got all these answers, and I thought I would share all of these answers with you as well. So there's a lot of them to go through, so I'm going to go through them by different game mode and module. And now not all of the currencies may be totally relevant for you by the time that you watch this video. Make sure to save the video and come back to it later to check again when you're ready to actually use those currencies. Just to be clear, we are not going to be talking about event currencies in this video. This is going to be for all of the main game modes and shops in the game that are going to be permanently added into the game. So you can always come back and reference this video if you're ever confused. Okay, so time to jump into the first one, the one that everybody wants to know because this is a gosha game. So we're going to jump right to black cards. Black cards are the general free to play currency and currency that you use to exchange for uh, near everything in the game. You can use them on the gasha system. You can also use them in the other shops for other materials for progressing characters. But the primary use that you're going to use them for is for pulling on the various banners. You can use black cards to exchange for one, the basic construct R&D tickets. These tickets are used to pull on the base banner. This is a static banner that will always be available. The only potential incentive for that is that after 40 attempts, you are guaranteed at least one S rank. So there's a bit of an incentive there. The other things that can be converted into are the event construct R&D tickets. These are the tickets that you're going to use to pull on the themed fate arrival or fate arrival construct banners. These are going to be the banners that are either rotating uh, S rank characters who have previously arrived in the game in the case of the arrival construct or will be for brand new characters in the case of the theme construct banner. However, being the gasha game that it is, there is also a gasha for the different weapons. So there is the target weapon research which will be used for the unique weapon for the current themed S rank character who's just recently arrived. However, there is also a basic weapon research one as well, where there is a chance to get S rank weapons too. There is also the transcendent banner that will still operate with the same R&D tickets. And there is also the cub banner or combat unit booster banner, but that's something that doesn't become relevant until around level 80, but you can also convert the black tickets into that as well. The general recommendations for black cards. At the end of the day, this game is all about fun. So. You're always going to want to pull on the character you think you're going to have the most fun with. That's always first and foremost. However, if you want to optimize your efficiency a little bit and you're okay with some delayed gratification, the community consensus is always to be pulling on the themed construct banner. And that is because after every 60 pulls, you are guaranteed the S rank that is on the themed banner. It is definitely the most efficient way to get the new S rank characters. So it is the most bang for your buck that you're going to get from the black cards. As well, based on the amount that you can get from weekly challenges, progressing in the story, uh, and other events that come through uh, through each patch, you should be able to get at least close to 15K black cards uh, for every new S rank character. They do come every two patches, the new character. So you should have lots of time to save for the next one. That is always going to be the recommendation. But again, pull how you want and have fun with it. We're going to jump over to the challenge area and talk about a couple of these first. The first one is the Phantom Pain Cage. Great way to get black cards uh, doing the weekly challenges here. But on top of that, there is also a Phantom Pain Cage shop. From doing the Phantom Pain Cage, you're going to get this currency called Phantom Pain Scar or just called Skulls if you're ever looking at any threads online. They're just talked about as skulls. And you can use these to exchange for different shards for A and S rank characters, but you can only exchange them on S rank characters that you already have. So you can't use them to get any S rank characters you've never gotten before. Pretty much goes without saying, always reserve them for your S rank characters. This is enough to bring an S rank character up to double S. Definitely gonna be the most efficient way to do that there. That is also because the A rank construct shards can be gotten from the interlude chapters. So within the interlude chapters here, you can see if I open Lotus, switch to challenge mode, there are two challenges here where there's multiple attempts and you can get different shards and you can get these per day. So it's definitely a better use of your resources to get the S shards, not the A shards. Back to challenges. We are gonna jump into the war zone. 
in war zone as you are progressing you are going to have the war zone shop here and you will be getting war zone influence war zone influence can be used to be exchanged for six star memories or this six star memory resonance material pick now some of you in the early game who are like myself going into this go what the heck is this even mean? Well, let me tell you. A late game process, you've got the memories you want in the slots that you want. There is another process to get more battle power and more stats in the training section here to resonate. And when you resonate a memory, you are locking this memory to resonate with a specific character. And what that does is when the character is using that memory, they're going to get additional perks and stats from doing that. This is a permanent thing. But when you do that, the perk that you get, you can see in the skill preview here, there are different perks you can get from doing the resonating. And when you resonate for the first time, it's random. You're gonna get a random perk. But there is this material picker that you can use to actually just swap it to the skill that you want. So again, late game fine tuning, but is definitely super useful. So for those of you who are playing the long game here, it is pretty much agreed upon that this six star memory resonance material pick is the best option because there are other ways to get six star materials in the game so another game mode that i haven't had a ton of experience with uh, myself but there is more to talk about here is the norman revival plan as you progress through this game mode you are going to get the tantalum ore tantalum ore is only used in the ore shop here which is used for those pets that you get in the cub banner you can use these to get shards for those pets to progress those. So I would just suggest holding onto that ore until you have the pet that you want to raise up very quickly, and then you can spend them on that. Switching out of the challenge mode into the guild. Within the guild, there is the weekly challenge that you can fight through. And as you continue to do that, you will get this currency right here, the United Achievement Points. United Achievement Points get used in the point shop, which you can also find in the shop area of the game. This is kind of like the Warzone shop in that you can get more character shards here, but specifically for transcendent characters, for A and S rank characters as they come as well. As you can see, I'm on global, so I can only see A ranks right now. I, as you can also see, I haven't bought any of them for Kamu, which I will probably get around to at some point. If you get all of the shards for the characters that you're looking for, the next thing that you can look at are these Hypertune crystals uh, and some of the other Hypertune uh, materials. That again is part of a late game process. It builds on top of the memory resonance. So as I mentioned before, when you get a resonance with a character and you get a perk that's placed on it, you can use the Hypertune materials to elevate that even further. As you can see, I have not done anything yet because I'm still early enough in the game that I don't want to start resonating just yet. There's more progress I can do. But again, prioritize the shards first. Switching out of the guild into the dorm. The dorm, we've got three different currencies we mess around with in here. We've got the dorm coins, decor coins, and residence permit. The decor coins you pretty much use for just building new furniture within the dorm that you can use to place. And you can also use them to buy blueprints to then modify furniture to look like something else. You can modify them into sets, so then you can create themed rooms like this one. I did the cyberpunk room here, as you can see. So that was from modifying a bunch of the furniture. And that's pretty much what you use the decor coins for. Now the dorm coins come in a much smaller supply, but you would use them primarily to get additional residence permits or the coding sketches. The residence permits are what you use to get additional dorm areas unlocked. And then the coding sketches can be used to be redeemed into coding blueprints. What are coding blueprints? Coding blueprints are what you use in the coding shop to unlock codings for different characters. This isn't exactly something that you can rush into. Uh, there's not a way to just advance it very quickly. It's simply just grind out your dorm every day. You'll get dorm coins, buy the coding sketches, and then you can get the skins that you want. Uh, there's a couple that I've got my eye on, like for example, the Night Fever and Ayla's Aster Hair coating. But again, we'll see if we get around to building her, uh, if I'll bother spending coatings on that. You can see I'm starting to get pretty close, at least to the Vera one with the 28. So that's it for the different game modes. So let's just jump to the shop itself. The supply shop is just cogs and black cards. Like I mentioned before, point shop we talked about previously from the guild. And again, the cogs factory, this is an area where you can purchase six star memories using cogs. Early game, you're probably not going to do it because you need a lot of cogs for raising everything up. So you're probably going to be doing that a little bit later. 
Just a quick honorable mention with the exchange shop. This is where you can uh, swap certain overclock materials for other overclock materials if you're short on one in particular. Uh, it's usually at a pretty steep conversion though, I will mention. So I would suggest only doing that if uh, you're completely out of everything else and you just really need to get that last item just to overclock the, uh, the memory, you know, to get it to the highest level. Then you can look at doing it. But again, it's kind of expensive to make the exchange. I made that mistake pretty early on in the exchange shop one. I did a lot trying to progress quickly and wasn't always the best idea. So our last section just to cover is the recycle shop where here you can use to exchange uh, first in the hypertune shop to swap those different hypertune coins that I mentioned earlier to swap those around for various materials to again advance those memories even further very late game don't concern yourself too much with the early game on that so here there's a six star weapon shop and a five star weapon shop and each one accordingly has a weapon shard type to go along with it so in this case the five star weapon shards these can be used to exchange for a specific five star weapon that you need the ones you'll most likely be encountering are going to be the five star weapon shards as those come through various challenges and you also get them if you break down other five star weapons that you've gotten and you can get those through the co-op game mode is the best way to farm out those weapons as well as just getting straight up shards from there as well as you can see weekly you can grind out a number of co-op mode runs and you can get you know up to 150 weapon shards just from here alone again when you run the co-op mode you can get five star weapons and just break them down if they are for the weapons that you don't want and then you can get shards that way i think it's pretty straightforward but from the weapons that you break down you break down five star weapons you get five star weapon shards you break down six star weapons you get six star weapon shards because you really only get six star weapons from the banner you're not really going to be messing around with this maybe from some events you might be able to get some shards but we're not really talking about events today so you're likely just going to be experiencing the five star weapons and again for here i would definitely look at prioritizing your main dps weapon as well it is one of the biggest impacts to your battle power early on is going to be your weapon so prioritize that now i was silly and i made the exchange on the kuji nosada before i actually got my first s rank character and so now i don't have enough to get the bipolar star rift which is totally inting my live uh am hold on uh, hold on empiria <laughs> after reading it a few more times i realized the y comes before the r so not whatever i was saying before empiria makes way more sense <laughs> and again here just to cap it off too there's a four star and a, a four star weapon and memory uh, shop as well but you'll probably come by these uh, a lot more frequently and that's it that is all of the major currencies that you're going to be messing around with in punishing gray raven and kind of the best ways to use them in each of the shops i know there's a ton of different game modes and as a fairly new player myself i had no idea what was going to be the best thing to use where and so I wanted to put this together to help anybody else out who was feeling similar to me in that uh, in that regard. Again, remember, at the end of the day, this game is all about fun. So pick the characters that you want to play, get the weapons that you want to get for those characters, and don't overly concern yourself about min-maxing because if you stress out too much about min-maxing and then you're not having fun playing the game anymore then why are you playing it to begin with just always keep that in mind again i hope this was helpful for you thank you again if you've made it this far in the video make sure to like and subscribe thank you very much for the support and we'll see you next time